Hello. My name is Una, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story with you all today. I'm incredibly nervous, not because I'm speaking to a large group of people. As you can imagine, for me, that's an occupational hazard, although normally they're wearing flak jackets and carrying guns, so I hope none of you are armed. But actually, because what I'm going to talk about today is intensely personal. This opportunity has given me the first time in a number of years to actually reflect on my story, on the things that have shaped my journey in policing and the things that really matter to me, my choices, my mistakes, and there have been many, and how important it continues to be for me to both dream and imagine. I've been asked to speak today because I'm a cop, and probably more than any other thing in my life, it has been what has defined me. And anyone who knows anything about policing in our place will expect me to talk about three things more than any other. Being a youngish woman, Catholic, in what is a profoundly male organization in both style and substance, and what is still in Northern Ireland, a perceptively Protestant vocation. Instead, I'm going to tell you about my story and what I learned throughout my childhood and education in Thornhill College in Derry that prepared me for what I do now. It's a cluster of memories and experiences from a house that seemed to be full of books to being encouraged to read and have my own opinion from a very early age through to my grandfather and the stories he used to tell me. And that concept of story has become more and more important to me the older that I've got. I remember one time him telling me after a particularly melodramatic moment as a teenager, you know, be really careful about the stories you listen to because you're going to listen to those voices in your head for an awful long time. And there is real wisdom in that for us all, real truth, that took me many, many years to put into practice. Because the fact is this, we don't tell stories. Stories and truth tell us. And the stories that I listen to, and I hope the stories that I tell now, were wide enough and broad enough for me to imagine everything that I could be. Stories that shape my ability to move beyond the uniform, beyond what my people, my place, my family might have imagined for me and shape how I choose to live. We're often told you cannot be what you cannot see. However, where I was raised, and I mean raised, because of my two brothers, my sister and I left home, we were raised to believe that you couldn't be what you couldn't imagine. We lived in 30 Carb Court, Ballamagorty and Derry. It was then and is now a place on the edge, both geographically and economically. When I googled it in preparation for this talk today, I found that it's a place where people continue to be shot in 2018. It is now and was then one of the top three most deprived areas in Northern Ireland, yet the place is in my very bones. In the words of a well-known Mary Black song, although I made the great escape to the police service, to Belfast, to England, I never got away because I didn't want to get away, because it was a place, it was a people, it was a family that shaped values that make me who I am as a woman, as a mother and most certainly as a police officer. Concepts that allowed me to imagine the unimaginable. It took me all the way to the steps of Senate House in Cambridge as I received my master's degree. Concepts that sustain me on my journey in policing now. And like most things that work well, they are very, very simple. Three core values, courage, clarity, compassion, and that desire to connect. Connect with people, families, individuals, communities, connect the strategic with the very local and the head with the heart, because anything worth doing well needs both. And the first of those that I learned about was courage. And I learned this at my mother's knee. She's here today. This is the only photograph that I have of her and I when I was a baby. I was born in Newry in County Armagh, 94 miles away from my home in Donegal. It must have felt like the other side of the world to her as she left with her bag in her hand and me in her belly and went to Newry to live with the nuns to form her child and leave me behind for adoption like so many other young women in 1970s Ireland. 
I remember her telling me in years past that she wasn't even allowed to nurse me and dress me when I was born, all those instinctive things, because actually people thought it was far better to keep us separate because it would make the leaving easier. She was just 14 years old. She had me on her 15th birthday. Yet we are here today together. Why? Because she brought me home. She knew instinctively then, as a 15-year-old child, what the right thing to do was, and I learned that from her, to plant my feet and take my position on what the right thing to do is. She gave me the courage to do that and gives me the courage to dream. And that manifested itself in a number of firsts in my life and my career. Unsurprisingly, given where I'm from, I was the first in my community to join the police, the first in my school community, the first in my family, a really big deal for a wee girl from Derry. I was the first of the new squad of PSNI recruits that came into being on the 1st of November 2001. And why did I do that after I finished my law degree? Because I think I knew, at least as well as my peers, if not a wee bit better, how important it was to have a police service that looked, felt, and thought like the full spectrum of the community that we are tasked with protecting and serving. It's also latterly been about the courage to bring my whole self to work as a single mother, as a lawyer, as a woman, particularly in this phase of my life as I police the city now in the UK some four times the size of Belfast. And it's also about acknowledging the courage that I see in the people I work with every day, despite our very evident mistakes in policing, and God knows we've made many. I can tell you this, the people that I have met over the last 17 or 18 years are some of the most courageous people you could ever have the privilege of meeting. They are heroes and heroines. They have a degree of humility and humanity that is quite extraordinary. That and a profound sense of duty and responsibility. So what can we learn from this now in our place? Well, I suppose for me, it's around having the courage to acknowledge the world there currently is and the world that there should be and the gap that's in between. We know better than most in Northern Ireland what equality looks like, what opportunity looks like. Imagine that we had the courage to shape and mold the future into those set of ideals. Could you imagine what our story could be? The second thing I learned was around clarity, and if I'm being honest, like most things, and this in particular, it comes a bit later in life, because I think real clarity comes from birthing and pushing an effort, and it came for me in my 30s. And what I'm talking about is that agency moment when you stop relying on external validation to tell you that you're doing okay, and you start relying on your own internal criteria. And it came for me through trauma, through a divorce, through rearing a daughter on my own and the constant questions I ask myself still about what I give to her and what I give to my job because there's only so much to go around. I remember one Christmas in particular, my mummy, I'll remember it very well. I was at home on Christmas Eve, I just put the Santa toys out and I got the phone, ma'am, there's been a murder. I was one of eight senior investigating officers in the police service of Northern Ireland, eight people that were respond, responsible for responding to and dealing with homicides, murders, and serious crime. The other seven were all fellas in their 40s, and I picked up every on-call across the Christmas period and New Year, and so determined was I to prove that I could do it, that I was as good as any of them. I didn't ask for help. And what happened was, there I was, at home in Donegal, the Santa toys and the mat in front of the Christmas tree, the big man due in four hours, my wee girl up in bed, and a dead body in East Belfast. Clarity began for me from the inside out. I understand now why. I understand why people leave well-paying jobs for purpose-driven ones. I understand why we volunteer, even when we have children. It's called the Hawthorne effect, and what we're talking about is that need in us as human beings for emotional return, often at the cost of material compensation. What we strive for is not that tensionless state, but rather that worthwhile task, freely chosen. Napoleon talked about the fact that his army won because they knew what they were fighting for and they loved what they knew. My army won because they knew what they were fighting for and they loved what they knew. 
I love what I know, and I know policing. And the single fundamental truth is this, good policing changes lives. It is about so much more than crime. It is about hope, education, equality, social mobility. In the place that I'm now responsible for as a commander in Rotherham, like our own place, it's about rebuilding trust in traumatized communities, a place that actually has legacy that could give our own a run for its money. Imagine policing was something that we could all support and have faith in. I watched this graffiti go up on a wall not far from where I lived after two of my colleagues were murdered. Imagine it was something we all fully had a stake in. Whether you lived in Chantala or the Shankill Road, families, young people, communities with real skin in the game, could you imagine what we could achieve? And the third thing I learned about was compassion, and we've talked a lot about this today. Compassion for me is about being more than sympathetic. I find that quite frustrating, actually. It's about acknowledging a need in someone and then crucially doing something about it. And compassion is a driving force for any good policing response, because policing is a profoundly human endeavor. We meet people when they're at their absolute lowest. They call us when no one else will answer and no one else cares. I've been a murder detective for many years and I can tell you this, the look in the faces of the young people, and it is young people, that I invariably arrest for murder is not that different than the look in the faces of the people I go to tell them that their loved one is dead. I've met very, very few truly bad people but I've met a lot of broken ones. I ask my cops to be compassionate with each other. This is really tough work, and it takes all sorts, which is why we need all sorts. Policing is about people, people who stand on a cordon point for hours in the rain, people that run towards the stuff that we all instinctively run away from, and people who sometimes pay the ultimate price. My colleague, Ronan Kerr, murdered on the 2nd of April, 2011, murdered because he was a cop. I will never forget being asked to take responsibility for investigating his murder. I will never forget how hard I cried after I came back from meeting his mother, and I've cried a lot since. Imagine we could be truly compassionate with each other in our place. Imagine that we could be something more than just empathetic, tap into that profound sense of duty around people who are suffering at either side of us and actually feel compelled to do something about it. That, for me, should be the thread that connects us all here, Catholic or Protestant, black or white, rich or poor, is that utter conviction that we are tasked with leaving a legacy for our children that is better than anything they can imagine. Because be sure of this, our children one day will have children of their own and they will ask us what we did in our place, in our time, to make things better. And then finally, connection. Connection with each other. I'm laughing at my dad. In our heads and in our hearts. This is my father. And I learned that from him. He's pretty much perfect in my eyes. And he took me and my mum when he was 21 years of age to the magistrate's court in Derry, and he formally adopted me as his own daughter. He gave me his name. He gave me a family to belong to. And he gave me a sense of how important real connections are. They can be life-affirming. They're about legacy. He taught me then, and he teaches me now, as I see him every Sunday collect my granda and take him to mass, and then out for a wee run in the car for a bite to eat, that what we leave behind is not engraved in stone, it is woven into the lives of other people around us. It's the stewardship of the past, reinvigorated and rejuvenated in the responsibilities of the present, a focused stewardship of the future. His example wasn't the main thing that influenced us as children. It was, in fact, the only thing. 
Robert Peel, policing's founding father, spoke to this connection when he said the police are the public and the public are the police. Policing, I'll say it again, is about so much more than crime. It can be a stepping stone or a stumbling block. It can give people, places, communities hope and ambition beyond anything they can realise for themselves because it is about educational attainment, health, and we know better than most, good policing here is about peace. So as we imagine what's ahead for us, for our children, our place, and reflect carefully on what we now get to enjoy, a peace that was hard fought for, let's lift our sights and our hearts and dream for our place and shape and guard that story very, very carefully. Let's live up to our promise, to that duty to leave a legacy for our children that is better than anything they can imagine and understand how the stories we tell ourselves, the stories we tell of ourselves here need to be broad enough and wide enough to allow us to imagine everything that we could be and bring our conscience to bear on everything that we should be. That, and take it really personally, I've never been sure than I am now, in the words of Lyra. It's time to make our world better, one piece at a time. Now let's get to work. <laughs>